Hey everyone, today's video on the 2024 Montreal Auto Show will be split into two parts. The first part will include two stories, one about my room and one on Adrian's room, Audio Excellence, and why I almost cried in both rooms. Now the second part of the video will be the actual show coverage. So jump to this timestamp somewhere if you want to just check out the show. Okay, so let's start with the first story. Uh, let me introduce my room. So I got a room to demo my new Canadian design and made Class A 21 Galleon TS A20 Power Amp. Finally, after two years of development, it is ready for market. In my room, I had Oliver from Le Studio de Son, a local Montreal dealer. Now he brought these award-winning THX Dominus certified per listen audio RT7 speakers. Now, these are two channel stereo speakers. And if you pay attention, there are three silk domes for the tweeter array. And uh, La Studio de Son is based in Montreal via Saint Laurent, and they carry other products like XTZ and Aperion. Now, I use the Eversolo A8 for, as a source and preamp. And for the cables, I use XLO Signature Series cables. I'm so glad XLO partially sponsored the room because without those cables, yeah, I probably would have packed my bags and quit. So initially, I wanted to use the new Galleon TS Navy 2 preamp, but uh, let's just say it's not ready for market yet. A bit too bright for my taste. As you know, the room is your worst enemy at an audio show. I know this, so that's why I brought uh, bass traps and diffusion panels. Our audio stand, it's not even an audio stand. Now, Oliver got it because I told him, we need something that is not high up so that I get better imaging. And I wanted to show the world the strength of the TSA-20 because it is a current feedback design, unlike 80% of the amps on the market, which are voltage feedback design. Now, current feedback design excels at sound staging. So after a few hours of setup, everything was plugged in. Well, I subbed the XLO cables because uh, Olivier had to go get them. I powered the system and I almost wanted to cry. Mr. Kanta, my audio buddy who helped me set up, said, dude, man, there is no soundstage. The soundstage is flat, and the bass is boomy. If you let people listen to this, Thomas, you will lose all your credibility. I tell you, man, Mr. Kanta was brutally honest. You see, when I played the track Birds by Dominic Fis Amy, the bass was so muddy that I could not hear the strings of the double bass. For some people, they might be like, oh, this is so amazing, boom, 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 rumbling bass. But if you think about it, man, you can get that with a $1,000 speaker, pair that with a $500 home theater subwoofer, if all you want is boom, 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 and loud volume. You don't need a $15,000 high-end speaker. And if you cannot hear the details on the top, middle, and low, it's not high-end audio. So I start playing with the positioning, and I keep putting out the speakers, and at one point, yes, the 3D soundstage formed. And if you're sitting at the sweet spot, man, you will feel the presence of the singer. Next time, pay attention to the rooms at the audio show. Only a few will pull the speakers out so much from the front wall. Okay, now my crocodile tears stop flowing because at least now I can showcase the strength of the soundstage, right? That's the TS20 strong, main strength. One of the main strengths. Now, however, the bass is still a problem because there is resonance, and I can still I still cannot hear the double bass string. And if an expert like from stereo if I walked in, they're gonna be like they'll pick up the problem right away. My credibility is on the line. This is the day before the show. If I move the speakers more, maybe I might be able to lower the resonance, but I might lose my sound stage. Yeah, okay, what about getting the foams and closing the port? Yeah, but that will change the tonality. So, what did I do? Now, for those of you who have seen my video last year on the Toronto Audio Show, like the $100,000 disaster video, you'll know this company, this dealer from uh, Winnipeg, Altitudo Audio. They are experts at problem solving. And I've been telling everyone who reached out to me for help, just call Altitude Audio, man. They'll solve your problem for you because they're the specialists at building synergistic system and treating rooms and well, making things sound good in any room. No, 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 they did not sponsor me. 
So it turns out they were also exhibiting at the show. So I picked up my phone. Hey, Leonid, man, my room sounds like garbage. Come save me. Oh, come fix it. 20 minutes later, Leonid and his brothers knocked on my door. They were able to tell, well, they, they were able to pick up the problem with just one song. And they told me there were a few solutions to the problem. Now, here's the interesting part. You know, most people would listen to the boom, boom, boom for the problem. They listen for the silence. Now, however, given our limited time and resources, uh, we decided to use the easiest solution. In short, he added these bamboo things to the port, and they used the same trick in their room also. So this is not a speaker issue, but a room problem issue, because I heard these speakers in another place, and it did not have this problem. So those little bamboo things is meant to break up the resonance. Anyway, Leonid from Altitudo has come to the rescue. He has his secret weapon. Show me your secret weapon. Oh, it doesn't look good. Yeah. What? Oh, it's like... Guys, these things are like $5,000 each. I'm just kidding, man. If you want to buy it, uh, I don't even know how much they cost. Pennies, pennies. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... Should I share the secret here on the internet, or should we just... Oh, there is no, the secret is, there is no secret. Mm -hmm. And guys, do not do this at home. This is only if you're doing a show at a hotel <laughs> and you have to deal with resonance because, you know, each room is different. So we can either close the port. That's one thing we could have done. But we really like the sound of it right now, right? Meaning that uh, the sound stage is good. The 3D is good. The mid-range treble is good. It's just the room is resonating with uh, the speaker. And um, this is what happens when you have years of experience. Damn, this is going to cost me supper, man. I got to buy a Leonid supper for this. Darn it. Do you guys eat McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just finished uh, treating these speakers. And as I said, it's because the room is just too small. Usually in a big room, you don't have that problem. And uh, thanks to Leonid from Altitudo, once we once he did whatever he had to do in the speaker, you can hear the pluck of the double bass, the information in the double bass. And after that, what happened is that uh, we went to bring these cables. You know what? I'm just going to flip. And these cables, XLO, they're like, I think they're top of the line signature. And this bring the, the detail to the next level. So right now we have a very, very good 3D soundstage. So this is uh, Olivier from the Studio de Son. He's uh, trying to get Taito to work. You know how it is, the day before the show, everything that should work kind of don't work. But uh, so far now we are finally satisfied with the sound. I was about to cry and quit. So good for me. Surprisingly, those cables tip the presentation from good to great. Now, I was happy, and as long as we kept the volume below a specific volume, the room will sound good. So if you came and it did not sound good, my apologies, we got the volume wrong when you came in. Next year, I'll bring an SPL meter. So how did the room sound after all this effort? Well, the room was... Interesting enough that it earned high praise from Stereophile. And let me link it in the first comment and keywords from the article. Explosive dynamics, transparency, dimensionality, tonal purity, vocal naturalists, and micro details. We had it all. And by the way, I play a guessing game in my room. I had people trying to guess how many watts the Class A amp is. I thought it was, uh, I don't know, 200, 300 watts, yeah. Class AB. Yeah. And the more I was listening to it, it was too warm for AB. Yeah. But I was asking to myself. Okay, so the second story has something to do with Audio Excellence Room. You know, the problem with Audio Show is we don't give each room a proper chance. We usually pop in for one minute, listen, and then out. What is unusual about Adrian's audio excellence room is that you have to wait to get in. Yep, the wait can be 20 minutes long. And for sure, 
If you wait 20 minutes, you will want to get your money's worth and sit through the whole 20, 30 minute presentation. So Adrian was there to promote the new Daniel Hertz speaker from Mark Levinson. Now, what is unique about the system is that there, there are no crossover in the speakers. Everything is controlled through this microchip. And for Mark Levinson, this is the way to go if you want a breakthrough. Because if you think about it, right, nothing has really changed in the last, what, 40, 50 years. This system is pushing the envelope by embracing the advancement in microchip technology. Now, I'll let you read up on it yourself by what I meant. So during this presentation, Adrian focused on connecting us to the music instead of presenting the system. So what I meant is he would tell us the backstory of a song where just before we listen to it, for example, you tell us the sad story of Joni Mitchell and then play the song both sides now. Once you know the song's meaning and backstory and take the time to listen to it, wow, man, it really moves you. He would then play a different version of the same song when Joni was older. I tell you, man, you can really hear the emotions with the older version. I was fighting back, man, not to cry. And my audio buddy next to me was like, I don't know if he was crying, but he was definitely wiping his eyes. So I must thank Adrian for giving me this experience, the best experience ever at an audio show. Now, some of you might think, well, then it was not the system that moved you, but Adrian's incredible storytelling instead. I think it's a combination of both. Because the first minute I stepped in the room, it was at the end of the previous presentation. And I heard that Both Side Now song from Joni. And this was before I knew about any backstory. And I told myself, wow, man, there is a lot of emotions with the system. Nice, but it's 50 grand though. Uh, it's not pocket change, but definitely a memorable system. So that's it for the two stories about me almost crying in the show. Now let's move to the actual show. So the show started with a ribbon cutting ceremony. And guess who was in the crowd? Have you noticed? They are all young people. This is the future of hi-fi. Now, since there are many videos on most of the big rooms by other YouTubers, I will skip most of them and just focus on the rooms that I find interesting. First, room. I was lucky to get a special demo in the LeMay audio room. Le the LeMay Homage electrostatic speaker has a very special design because it is curved. When was the last time you saw a curved panel speaker? Between the top and bottom panels, there is a super, mid, uh, super tweeter housed in the waveguide. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into detail about the design's backstory, but it is a fascinating read on their website. Now, the speaker is optimized for one sweet spot. I like that approach because between you and me, man, this hobby, most of us enjoy alone. If that is the case, why not put everything you have into making it the best for that one sweet spot? These three speakers do a few things really well. Accurate tone, effortless resolution, and grand sound stage. So let's talk about the resolution. At one point, Francois played a song in a foreign language in a chorus. There's a chorus going. Even though I could not understand the language, I could easily repeat the singer's words. In the middle of a chorus, that is hard to do. Next, they disappear entirely despite their large size. And if you are into classical music, you will see that they really can convey the scale of the orchestra. The bass will go low, but not the boom 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 bass beginners like. Francois, who is retired, originally built these speakers for himself. So he told me these speakers were built out of love. It's not cheap. 200 grand for this system. By the way, uh, the speaker cables in this room are very interesting. You see, Francois told me he used to own cables that are like $30,000. And these cables that cost only a thousand eight hundred Canadian dollars was able to beat it. Yep, I have them at my home now. 
And for those of you who have a budget of two grand Canadian and are shopping for speaker cables, yeah, you might want to wait for my video on it. OMG. All right, next, uh, the SVS room. Ah, I love how they have a great sense of humor. They posted this warning sign, which was both funny and accurate. In the room, they were showcasing their new Ultra Evolution series speaker. They also showed the Top Gun movie in a home theater setup with a gigantic subwoofer. And I hope no one stay in the room next door because they were generating a level 2 earthquake with their subwoofer. I was more interested in their new flagship Evolution speakers, and from memory, the mid-range sounds different than the SVS Ultra speakers I reviewed many moons ago. You still have that sparkling detail highs and the bass that makes you wonder if the subwoofer is on or not, but the mid-range sounds different. Well, if my memory is still good. Now, after we left the room, I told my audio buddies that there were no subwoofers, and they were shocked. Now, I did request the bookshelf version for review because I'm too old to move those big ones. So, stay tuned. Next, the artist cloner room is one of the show's highlights. I can tell you that getting a room at a show is not cheap. So understandably, companies try to maximize their space to demo their gear. Artist cloner was different because they used one of their rooms to share their history. They created a little museum instead of playing another system in that room. It felt like a company that you can connect to. Unlike the big, big, big companies that make you almost feel like a number. I don't mean it in a bad way, but you get my point. Now, the Mechanica speaker will raise mixed reaction. Will, yeah, you'll get different reactions. Some will say it is a piece of art, while others would wonder if they ran out of material and used their barn door to build their speaker. The speaker ports remind me of the exhaust pipes from the cars in the movie Mad Max. The overall steampunk vibe? I love it. Now putting jokes aside, the sound from these speakers was absolutely jaw-dropping. Strong, fast, airy and layered. The bass was clean and powerful. Describing these speakers with simple terms like this does not do it justice. They're more than the price of my Corolla, these speakers, they, they will sell them for 35 grand after the promotional period. They had the perfect size room to demo these speakers. Man, I wish uh, I, I can afford a big room like this next year, man. So it does not become a bottleneck. Anyway, uh, one of the best room at the show. Next, TAD room. It's one of those rooms in which you have to decide whether you buy a Ferrari or a TAD system. Now, the room is, is enormous, and for those who attend the show, some rooms are so big that the speaker sounds like Bluetooth speakers because they cannot fill the room. These TAD speakers had no problem filling the room. What truly really shocked me was the second time I went in, they were playing the stand mount version 1. And it took us a few minutes to realize because it was able to fill the room. Have you seen the size of this room? I love the vocals with these speakers, it's 100% my kind of mid-range. In Chinese, we have this expression, um, it's called Royal Aura. Interesting, my audio buddy Mr. Kanta and I use the same expression to describe the sound. I don't know how to translate it, but the closest translation would be that the overall presentation sounded rich. Well, there's body and thickness in the mid-range. Some speakers at the show, because the room is so big, it feels like a kid yelling at the top of his lungs. These TAD speakers, it feels like a tenor, Luciano Pavarotti filling the room. It does have a more mature kind of sound. Now, if I describe Focal speakers as like a sport car that's all about speed, detail, and transparency, these TAD speakers will feel more like a Rolls Royce, where it's more about elegance and composure. Next is the audio note room. Vincent Belanger, the ambassador for Audio Note. Let me listen to his latest album, Nocturne, performed by Le Neuf. Or in English, the Nine. Nine? Well, eight cellists and one bassist? I think that's how you call it. What is nice about, nice about this album is their interpretation of well known classical pieces. Now, before Vincent even told me anything about this album, he let me listen to it in their more affordable system. And I noticed that the presentation was 
romantic. It turns out it was Vincent's goal to bring out the romanticism of the cello and also to showcase the different timber timbre of each cello. This really challenges the hi-fi system because it has to have enough resolution to allow me to distinguish the different cellos timbre. I was already blown away in the quote-unquote budget room and I went into the expensive audio note room I was even more blown away. Man, the soundstage was just phenomenal. That amp they use uses 300B. 20 grand. This is like in-game performance kind of amp. Well, for my taste. Because I like the romantic soft type of sound. And this 300B delivered. Oh, Vansan gave me a signed copy of his CD. Man, I'm going to eBay it. Next, I covered the Heaven 11 room last year, the Billy M. So I was not planning to talk about them this year. I simply dropped by to say hi to Itai while he's the CEO. But you see, when I was there, after listening to the Billy M with the Pure Audio Project Trio 10 speaker that uses an AMT tweeter, you know what? I just have to talk about it. This combo had incredible synergy. My audio buddy, Mr. Kanta, who thought the Billy M was just meh okay last year, was blown away by the bass coming out of this combo. I'm not talking about boom, 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 powerful bass, but it was texture and the presentation was spacious and neutral. I don't know if it, it is because it is an open baffle speaker or because it has an AMT tweeter or because of the Billy M tubes, but the sound was open. See, I did get a few remarks from some of you last year. The Billy M did not meet your expectations at the Montreal show. This year, I would not be surprised if it exceeded your expectations. The combo was so good that one of my audio buddies bought the speakers. I can't wait to try that speaker when it gets to next week. For some of you, buy this combo and you can quit watching YouTube on Hi-Fi forever. The next room is the Q Acoustic room. I have the Q Acoustic Concert 500 speakers and I wanted to know how the new affordable Q Acoustic 5000 series speaker compare. Now, one major complaint at the show I hear all the time is that many of the rooms has bass overload problem. And in this room, the Q Acoustic 5040, or was it the 5050? I don't remember. Had one of the best balance at the show meaning not too much bass, just right. They also play at normal human listening volume. And I like these speakers top end more than the flagship Concert 500 because they're more sparkly. And assuming you are not a bass nut and don't only play songs like Make Us Stronger 24 seven, just from what I heard, these $2,000 5040 speakers are something you should definitely check out because they're just nicely in between analytical and musical. They have a very safe sound. Nothing is pushed to the extreme. Now, I need to get a pair in for review to be sure. Definitely like one of the highlights of the show. Next is the Solen room. Now, once again, the room is the bottleneck because I've heard these uh, big speakers at Solen's listening room. They were so good. Instead of showing my audio buddies the big one, because of the room. I asked Lohan from Solen to play the smaller one. With this smaller one, the bass was just right for this room. And what is unique about this speaker is that the tweeter uses the same material as the woofer. It's called T-Extreme. This speaker has it all. Detail, soundstage, bass, speed, and looks. This is actually a kit. You can buy the kit and build the speaker for about 2.5 grand USD. Now, the version at Solen is slightly different from the stock version that you can buy. Now, many of you will think, wow, well, at this price, I might as well look at the Kef R3 Meta or the Bukhar S400. Would it surprise you if I told you this? This speaker can rival those two other speakers, and this one will have even more detail than the other two. Next, uh, Yamaha. You know, Yamaha has such a long history when it comes to hi-fi. There is a lot of love for their amplifiers, but recently I noticed there's little talk about their speakers. This is about to change with the new NS series speaker. 
Now on display was their NS2000A and this speaker has all the details and clarity you need. But it is not as edgy as the other competitors, which are also known for detail and clarity. It has that modern sound, which is more about speed, sound staging and resolution. Now Paul gave me a detailed breakdown of the technology behind the speaker and it is pretty impressive. I'll go into detail when I review their NS800A. Take a look at the cross section of the speaker. Take a look at the tweeter. Wow, rarely do I see a tweeter like this. If you look at the crossover, they use Mundorf capacitors. This is a big deal because those caps are not cheap and it means they invest heavily in the crossover. And from my own experience, Mundorf tends to be on the smoother side. Next, the monitor audio room was pretty cool. But strangely, I did not care about how it sounds because I was so focused on admiring the looks. I cannot help but keep thinking, hey man, when is ET going to come out? It also reminds me of the recognizer from the Tron movie. It definitely has that futuristic vibes. Well, at 120 grand, yeah, yeah. Uh, who cares how it sounds? Just the looks alone are worth it. Now, joking aside, despite the fact that they're not big, the scale and the bass they produce will fool you if I blind tested you. Meaning that you think that they're bigger than they are. Next time, I will give you a better report as I was just so in awe looking at the speaker that I forgot to analyze it. Altitudo's audio room. Ah, my savior. Well, I went to check if they told me what they told me was true. Meaning, are they also using the same bamboo thing to deal with the resonance in his room? Yep, he used it in all his speakers. That is why bass has much better control in his room than most. And the fact that he has well, a million speakers in his room probably helps in absorbing the sound. But seriously, the few times I was there, each speaker Leonet played me, the presentation was always clean and not muddy. The synergy is very good because you know he has a very good ear. So he is one of the few exhibitors who can sell a few speakers and cables at the show. He loves showing people what cables can do at the show. I'm so jealous because, you know, he can sell speakers and I have difficulty giving away my free instant noodles. Most speakers in his rooms are not mainstream. However, everything in that room is carefully picked for maximum synergy. Next is the Harkin room, where there are a few exciting things. The Lindenberg Bach Phono stage is 24 grand Canadian. It definitely does not look like any phono stage I've seen. The speakers are the Stein Highline Bobby M34 grand. They're like 34 grand. A very unique design. But the most incredible gear in that room for me is the speaker cables. Yeti conductor CNT. More of my cars with this cable. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I know. Um, I know. <laughs> You got a nice car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holy cow. I think that's the highlight of the show, man. $73,000 cable. <laughs> oh, yeah. He told me they are not made out of metal. Gosh, man, they should market it as vibranium or something. The final version does not look like what they had in the room. Now, Yeti is a company I don't know, but they do play in the higher price bracket. Like the Yeti power conditioner is 23 grand. Maybe because of the hornish wave guy speaker design and it was set up on the long wall with clean electricity, thanks to the power conditioner, this system projected an expansive soundstage with great micro details, lively and texture. And because it was near a few, it felt intimate. Next. Higo introduced their all-in-one 150 watt per channel H190V streaming integrated amplifier with the MoFi Source Point 8 speakers. This is what I call the sweet spot in hi-fi. Not so cheap to the point that you worry about not being good enough, not silly crazy money that you have to reverse mortgage your house, but solid high-end audiophile level performance at a reasonable price. Well, reasonable, 10 grand. 
coherent, big sounding, and a soundstage that envelops you. No hyper detail that you worry if your ears will bleed after an hour, just nicely balanced. Above all, the amp is safe for kids, does not get hot, and it has a high wife approval factor because it's just one piece. So, if you have about 10 grand to spend and don't want a system that pushes things to the extreme, you just want to listen to music, this should be on your list. Next is the German SPL room. Now, if you want a neutral presentation, I think this is it. Well, at least when I was there, I hear no coloration in the presentation. I was one song only, but you know, you get a really detailed and clean presentation. Now, I personally prefer color, but my audio buddy, Mr. Vintage, like this kind of honest to source presentation. No exaggeration in any of the frequencies. Now, I wanted to share this room because I just like the looks of these amps. They, they look so cute, so small. I would buy it just because they look so cool. Uh, but despite them being small, the design does make them look like serious gear. I read on the website, it has Voltaire technology and it is class AB. Uh, this surprised me because as I said, it was neutral. So let's end the show here now. Hopefully this will inspire some of you to attend the show next year. I always advise people to, you know what, listen to the good and ignore the bad. Sometimes the room is just so bad that you can't do much. A few systems I know that were supposed to sound good, downright sounded meh at the show. Now I'll finish the video with some interviews and you know behind the scene footage. This was a very successful show because there were so many people. Most of the rooms were always packed. I got to meet many of you and had a great time chatting with you all. I'm also grateful to those who attended my one hour special presentation event. Strangely, non-subscribers also ended up in my room at that time. Uh, I'm sad that I could not make it to all the rooms. For example, I told Derek from Toughnut I would check out his room to see his rack, and I did not. Uh, well, hopefully, maybe next year. Darn, I actually missed a few good rooms. All right, this is the day before the audio show, and as you can see, it's still early. It's about 11.30, people are getting ready. I've just arrived about an hour ago, slowly unloading my minivan. These are the base trap. Very important to treat the room. A lot of people don't treat the room. All right, I just finished unloading. Now it's time to go park my car. It's exciting because everybody's working so hard and it's very busy right now. And, uh, oh, by the way, Adrian from Audio Excellence happened to be my neighbor. You know, every time when I pass by those big rooms, I wonder if I ever will get the big room one day. Man, they cost the price of a car, some of them. Well, half a car, some of them. And uh, I just can't imagine the amount of energy and money people spend. All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Jean-Francois here who just listened to the Galleon TS20. Were you able to guess how many watt it was? Did you guess correctly? But first of all, I thought it was, uh, I don't know, 200, 300 watts, yeah. class AB. Yeah. And the more I was listening to it, it was too warm for AB. Yeah. But I was asking to myself, uh, class A, but, and, and also for a price. I mean, watch, I was not able to, to guess, right. really. So when I played the bass track, were you surprised when I tell you it was 20 watts? Yes, I was, mm -hmm. and uh, I knew we can trust you, but mm -hmm. I looked if there was a sub. <laughs> <laughs> no, and there was no sub. The, 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 it was evident because everything was tight mm -hmm. and uh, coherent. Mm -hmm. oh, it's, uh, I'm amazed. I and, uh, the sound and also the look, physical, mm -hmm. the, the, the physical look. Perfect. Oh, no, it's a, it's a, it's so you were a, impressed. It's a coup de cœur. Ah, oh, <laughs> I, uh, I have a lot of fun, and I will go to to listen tomorrow because just one shot. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a first impression, but the second one, I guess, it will be good also. Oh. So congratulations, you, you got it. 
Okay, so my name is Martin Bourassa. I work in Montreal and live in the Laurentians. I'm an audiophile on basic level, I can, I can say, but I love audio. And Galleon impressed me quite a bit. The, the way it impressed me is punchiness, cleanliness, sound-wise, compared to much higher systems I've heard, I would say, for the money, it's real bang for the buck. Honestly, I've been impressed. I loved it. The TS20, 20 watt, classic. Yes. A lot of bass, good quality sound. I love it. It's a, it's a good amp. I, I think it's a, it's a good amp. Well, did you expect 20 watt to have that kind of bass? No, no, not at all. Not at all. 20 watt. Is, but classic, you always, you with a little bit of watts, you always expect a little more, but not that much. Not that much. Okay. Yeah, so I had people guessing in the room how many watts after the sh uh, after playing it, and everybody was guessing how many watts. Uh, they, these people said there may be 100, 150, but only 20 watts. Nobody knows it. Yeah, yeah. So what about the TS-75? Did anybody guess it correctly? No, no. 75 watt. My my speed, my speed at home are 250 watts, and I think it would be not enough to send five watt to drive then but now that i hear it it's, it's enough to drive any, almost any speaker right right and people were guessing that it was what 200 300 watts right that's what yeah, people were guessing right, right exactly yeah yeah i tell people that nobody believes me people think 75 watts right well, anything else to add no just uh, enjoy and uh, you make good project and i'll still follow you thank you thank you no it doesn't feel like a 20 or uh, 20 watt at all and uh I really like uh, the look of it, and the price is even better. Uh, but it's three thousand seven hundred US uh, that one. Yeah. So not cheap. Crazy. Not cheap. No, it's not cheap. But uh, if you compare it to other stuff which I have at home, it may be around the same price. It's it's a good value. I see. So what did you like about the class A amp? The bass. How's the, the bass? bass again? You're the bass master with your amps. <laughs> it's crazy. It's yeah. punchy, control, fast and uh, right where it should hit and all of that without a subwoofer right right yeah. right and uh, you know i'm a subwoofer guy but when there's no subwoofer and i'm impressed by the bass not the low low but the the punchy part like 30 to 40 uh yeah hertz yep. uh, it kicks it kicks it, i it's, see it's crazy for 20 20 watts it's unbelievable right right anything else to add before we finish i'm happy to see you it's been a while yes uh, yes <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that's it for today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the famous two YouTubers here. They're here to cut the ribbon. Look at Jay's expression. He's all excited and nervous. Look at the sweat, man. Oh, goodness. So. I don't remember the last time I handled scissors with success. Ah, I see. Yeah, just make sure you cut it hard, huh?